Good evening. Um, my name is Julie Moore with the San Francisco Planning Department. I'm just going to wait a couple, few more minutes here um, as people are still joining the meeting. Okay, I think we're getting close. Okay, then I think we'll get started now. Hello again. Um, my name is Julie Moore. Um, and I am a uh, Thank you for joining us for the Lake Merced West EIR scoping meeting. My name is Julie Moore and I'm the San, with the San Francisco Planning Department. I am the environmental review coordinator for the project. And this is the first step in the environmental review process. Also joining me tonight are Chris Towns and Jackie Suen, the Rec and Park project managers and our EIR consultants who will help moderate the public comment process. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and will be posted on the San Francisco Planning Department's website. The purpose of tonight's meeting is for the Planning Department to receive your comments regarding the scope of the environmental review for this project. Our scoping meeting will begin with a 15 minute presentation describing the project, the California Environmental Quality Act, and how you can comment at different stages of the environmental pr review process. This presentation is the same presentation that is currently posted on our website. Then we'll open the live portion of the meeting for those of you who would like to provide oral comments on uh, the scope of the environmental review for the project. Or if you prefer, you can consider the information that's presented here tonight and send a written comment to me prior to the close of the comment period. A few details. During the presentation and the meeting, our meeting host will have your cameras off, microphones and telephones muted. When we begin the public comment portion of the meeting, we'll ask those of you who would like to uh, comment to use the Zoom raise hand feature or star nine if you're joining us by phone. Speakers will be queued and we'll have two minutes to speak. We will not be answering questions during this time. The Zoom Q&A and chat functions are also disabled for this meeting. So um, the next st step in this uh, will show the, um, the video presentation that describes the project and the environmental review process. Thank you for viewing the San Francisco Planning Department's scoping meeting presentation for the Lake Merced West project. The planning department is responsible for conducting review under the California Environmental Quality Act, or CEQA. For all projects in San Francisco. This scoping meeting is an early step in the CEQA review process for the project. This step notifies the public that the planning department is preparing an environmental impact report, or EIR, and that we welcome your comments concerning the project's environmental effects by July 9th. As a brief overview, the Lake Merced West project would create a new public recreational facility that would provide a wide array of recreational activities, including trail use, picnicking, paddle boarding, kayaking, fishing, fitness activities, a ropes course, bird watching, space for outdoor exercise, a skateboard park, multi-use courts for basketball and other activities, as well as restaurant dining and indoor space for gatherings, such as community meetings and birthday parties. 
My name is Julie Moore, and I'm an environmental planner with the San Francisco Planning Department. I am the coordinator of the EIR for this project. I will begin with an overview of the CEQA process, then I'll turn it over to Jackie Suen and Chris Town from Wrecking Park, who will describe the project background and proposed design features. Much more detail is available in the NOP. I'll then return to address the environmental review schedule and how you can participate. The planning department leads the CEQA process for city projects in compliance with state law or statute, state guidelines, and local requirements. The CEQA guidelines provide the framework for how to implement environmental review and that San Francisco admin code mandates our local procedures, including public outreach. The purpose of CEQA is to inform decision makers and the public of the project's environmental effects, to engage the public in the environmental review process, to disclose potential project impacts on the environment, and to avoid or reduce potential environmental impacts with mitigation measures or alternatives. Environmental review is conducted for a project prior to any final decision regarding whether or not to approve the project. The planning department has determined that an environmental impact report or EIR is needed for the Lake Merced West project because it may have a significant effect on the environment. The EIR will focus on the project's significant effects and will include an initial study that discusses project effects that would be less than significant. We know from previous environmental studies that the project would have a significant effect on historic resources. Therefore, the EIR will be focused on that topic and will include alternatives that would reduce project effects on historic resources. The EIR, including the initial study, will assess environmental impacts related to a full range of topics shown here such as air quality, noise, biological resources, hazardous materials, water quality, and transportation and circulation. For each topic, it will describe the existing environment at the project site and vicinity, and then analyze the project's impacts to the existing environment and cumulative conditions. Cumulative conditions are the combined effects on the environment, assuming adoption of this project and other reasonably foreseeable projects in the vicinity. Before I pass this over to Jackie, I will orient you to the project location. As you can see on this slide, the project site is located on the southern bank of Lake Merced's South Lake. It is approximately 11 acres in size, adjacent to John Muir Drive, just east of Skyline Boulevard. The site has been closed to the public since 2015. It contains the remains of the former tenant, the Pacific Rod and Gun Club, which includes several small one-story buildings and four skeet shooting fields, the semicircular features you see in the center. So now I'd like to introduce one of the project managers, Jackie Suen of Rec and Park. Thank you, Julie. Hello, everyone. I'm Jackie Suen with the San Francisco Recreation and Park Department. Thank you for taking the time today to learn about the Lake Merced West project. The project site is located on the southern shore of Lake Merced and is owned by the city and county of San Francisco and is under jurisdiction of the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission and managed by the Recreation and Park Department. It is the former location of the Pacific Rod and Gun Club, which operated skeet and trap shooting facilities from 1934 to 2015. The site is eligible for listing on the National Register of Historic Places and the California Register of Historic Resources at the local level of significance under criterion A1 for its association with the broad pattern of history related to the increased popularity of sport hunting and with the interrelated development of skeet during the period it evolved from a type of shooting practice into a competitive sport that occurred during the decades preceding World War II and within the context of the early 20th century wildlife conservation movement. Next slide, please. 
Lake Merced is an emergency non-potable water supply for San Francisco. From 1934 through 1994, the Pacific Rod and Gun Club used lead pellets as shot, which resulted in about 27 tons of lead in the lake per year. Lead pellets and targets containing polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons have also been found in the upland areas. After the club vacated the site, the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission performed an extensive cleanup program between May 2015 and April 2016, which included the excavation of soil to depths ranging from one foot to 10 feet. About 88,000 tons of contaminated material was hauled to a landfill and the site has been backfilled with clean soil. The Regional Water Quality Control Board approved the cleanup for unrestricted future use of the site. Next slide, please. As you can see in this aerial photograph, there are the four remaining skeet fields labeled four through seven. And also highlighted in yellow are the four other remaining historic landscape features. The, all of the buildings on site are in poor condition. My colleague Chris Towns will now give an overview of the project description. Thank you, Jackie. Here is the proposed site plan for the Lake Merced West project, uh, which would create a recreational facility on an approximately 11 acre site located at 520 John Muir Drive on the southwest side of Lake Merced. During the design and development phase, the Recreation and Park Department considered multiple site layout concepts which led to the proposed site plan, aimed at minimizing area devoted to vehicular circulation in order to maximize open space while accommodating a variety of recreational activities on the site. As you can see, facilities are clustered around the main parking area towards the center of the site to facilitate access for a variety of users while allowing for pockets of open space between buildings, as well as larger expanses of open space at both ends of the site and along the shoreline. The main buildings and terrace are situated at the optimal topographic location to take advantage of scenic lake views and enhance the user experience. The facility would offer an array of activities open to the public, such as trail use, picnicking, paddleboarding, kayaking, fishing, fitness activities, a ropes course, bird watching, skateboarding, multi use courts for basketball and other activities as well as restaurant dining and indoor space for gatherings, such as community meetings and birthday parties. A new community building and restaurant would be built near the center of the site. A new boathouse and arborist office and yard are also proposed at the southeastern end of the site, along with new restrooms on the west side of the site. Next slide, please. Here is the proposed site plan. Uh, with legend to highlight and differentiate areas of new construction, existing elements to be retained, new landscape features, and historic resource contributing features. The various buildings and programmatic spaces are numbered and labeled in the legend below. As you can see, new construction includes a community building, a restaurant, the SFPUC Arborist Facility, a boathouse and dock, a playground, a skate park, a viewing deck, and a public restroom. An existing element to be retained, which is also a historic resource contributing feature, includes Skeet Field 4, which will be rehabilitated and adaptively reused as a picnic area. New landscape features include a challenge course, basketball and multi-use court, and multi-use lawn areas. Next slide, please. This slide provides photographs of some of the architectural examples that conceptually inspired the proposed design. This example is of the Sea Ranch development in unincorporated Sonoma County, California, located along the Pacific coast, about 100 miles north of San Francisco. The proposed project was particularly inspired by the Sea Ranch's successful architectural relationship with its unique landscape and topography, as well as its preservation of open space. The bottom of the slide provides a site section taken through the proposed restaurant building to better illustrate how the unique downsloping topography of the project site traverses its various programmatic spaces from John Muir Drive to the Lake Merced Edge and how the proposed restaurant building and its associated patio terrace 
It is strategically situated to maximize views of Lake Merced. Next slide, please. Here is a planned view of the existing project site with a legend depicting areas where trees are to be removed or, or disturbed. As you can see, the majority of the existing trees remain in place. However, the trees at the southeastern end along John Muir Drive will be removed in order to accommodate new vehicular entry and circulation into the SFPUC Arborist facility and new landscaping. That concludes my portion of the presentation. I'll now pass it to Julie Moore from the San Francisco Environmental Planning Department to cover the project's CEQA review process. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Now I'll talk about the project CEQA review process. The first step of the EIR process was the issuance of a notice of preparation or NOP of an EIR and notice of a public scoping meeting. We mailed this notice on June 9th and are requesting oral or written comments on the scope of the EIR by Friday, July 9th. The NOP is available on the planning department website, sfplanning.org backslash sfsequadocs. That's S-F-C-E-Q-A-D-O-C-S. -E we will host a virtual scoping meeting on June 23rd, which will consist of this presentation followed by an opportunity for individuals to provide oral comments. Or you can submit written comments by letter or email until July 9th. This review period is your opportunity to provide early comments concerning the potential environmental effects of this project. Your comments should focus on significant environmental issues regarding this project and information that would help the environmental analysis. The planning department will consider the comments received during this 30-day period to inform the scope of the draft EIR. Please note that written responses to comments received during the EIR scoping period will not be prepared. The next step of the EIR process will be publication of the draft EIR, including initial study. Our current schedule anticipates that we will publish the draft EIR this fall or winter. We will distribute a notice of availability of the draft EIR to interested parties. You will have an opportunity to provide input on the draft EIR during a 45-day public comment period, including at a public hearing at the Planning Commission. Following the close of the draft EIR comment period, the Planning Department will prepare a comments and responses document. This document will contain written responses to all substantive comments received during the draft EIR review period. It will also identify any changes to the draft EIR as necessary to fully respond to the comments received. The comments and responses document will be distributed to those who commented on the draft EIR, various agencies and other interested parties at least 10 days prior to a planning commission hearing on the final EIR. The final EIR will consist of the draft EIR together with the comments and responses document. The Planning Commission will consider whether to certify the final EIR as adequate, accurate, and objective. Certification of the EIR would not mean that the project is approved or disapproved. Rather, it would only satisfy the CEQA environmental review requirements for the proposed project. Project approval or disapproval is a completely separate consideration from the adequacy of the EIR. Permits and approvals for the project would be required from numerous local, state, and federal agencies, including the Rec and Parks Department, the SFPUC, the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, the California Regional Water Quality Control Board, and the US Army Corps of Engineers. To recap, the planning department is preparing an EIR for the Lake Merced West project. We will host a virtual scoping meeting on June 23rd at 6.30 p.m. For details on how to register for the scoping meeting or to review the notice of preparation, please go to sfplanning.org backslash sfsequadocs. The Zoom meeting details are also shown on the screen. For meeting reg registration, it's bit ly bit period ly backslash 
Lake Merced West, or if you'd like to join the meeting by phone, you can just dial 888-788-0099, and the meeting ID is 848-5205-8374. To request language services for the meeting, please call 628-652-7550 at least 72 hours in advance of the meeting to ensure availability. Again, the intent of the scoping meeting is for the planning department to hear from you regarding the environmental analysis for the project. You don't have to attend the scoping meeting to provide the planning department comments. You may email your comments to cpc.lakemercedwesteir at sfgov.org or mail your comments to, Ju to me, Julie Moore, San Francisco Planning Department, 49 South Van S Avenue, Suite 1400, San Francisco 94103. Please remember to do so by July 9th. Uh, thank you very much for joining us for this uh, presentation and for your interest in the project and uh, take care. Okay, sorry, I get a little light coming in here. Um, all right. Um, now we're ready to open up the meeting for public comment. As I said before, in the interest of time, speakers will be limited to two minutes. Um, I recognize that many of you have uh, significantly more to say or than two minutes will allow. So please consider your verbal comments to be a summary of your principal points of view. And then uh, please send in, uh, you can supplement your, your comments with a written comment. And as I mentioned, um, both oral comments and written comments are given the same weight under CEQA. Um, please also note the goal is to discuss the scope of the environmental review of the project and speakers are urged to refrain from making any comments about the project itself, but to instead direct your comments to the scope and focus of the EIR. We're generally not here to answer your questions, but if you'd like to discuss the project further afterwards, um, please give me a call or send me an email and I'm happy to answer any questions you have about the environmental review and Rec and Park staff are available to discuss the project itself. Oral comments provided this evening will become part of the record. Anyone who comments will be added to our ma project mailing list to receive future not notices of the draft EIR publication. Note again, all comments are due by July 9th and should be limited to the environmental review. For example, such comments could address significant environmental issues or factors in the environment to consider, or suggested mitigation measures or alternatives to reduce environmental impacts, or just to request to stay informed during the environmental review process. Uh, one reminder is that we ask all speakers to be mindful that participants are calling in from their homes and to please use respectful language. Next slide, please. So if you'd like to make a comment today, we ask you to use the raise hand function if you're joining us online, or you can press star nine if you're joining by phone. Um, the Q&A and chat functions are disabled, so if you do see those, please don't um, use those if they're avail available. So when it's your turn to speak, I'll either call your name if you're joining online or the last four digits of your phone number. Uh, once your name or number is called, the moderator will unmute you so that you can speak. Your camera will not be turned on. To ensure a complete and accurate recording of the meeting is made, it's necessary that you speak clearly. If you're joining by phone, we encourage you to provide your name for the record, although that's not a requirement. And if you're representing an organization, please indicate the group and your official capacity. Comments are limited to two minutes and a timer will be shown on the screen. At the end of the two mi minutes, the moderator will mute your microphone and I will invite the next person in the queue to speak. I know it's a lot of information, but um, I think 
if you need help, you can contact uh, the meeting coordinator. So um, without further ado, let me uh, take a look here. And we have two hands raised. Uh, the first one, Dick Morton. Um, go right, right ahead, Dick. I think. Okay, can we hear Dick or here I'll add, Dick, can you unmute yourself? Okay, now. There we go. This is Dick Morton. I heard that the focus of the EIR is on cultural resources. And I wasn't sure if that means looking at the site, which is pretty barren now. I mean, the old gun club has been removed. Buildings, or is it just a historical review of that time period. The second question I have is between now and July 9th, is it possible to add project alternative for that would be analyzed as part of the EIR? No, it, as I recall, an EIR has a null uh, version and then the, the preferred option and maybe other alternatives. And I wanna know if we can add alternatives. That's it. Okay, thank you. Um, the next person on our list is Samuel Nelson. Uh, if you wanna unmute yourself, Samuel, you have two minutes. Hi, uh, thank you, Julie. Uh, like I said, my name is Sam Nelson. I am uh, one of the rowing coaches at Lake Merced. I am speaking for myself, but I do coach for St. Ignatius. Uh, the environment's so important down there and I would be remiss if I didn't bring up a specific concern uh, and a hope. Uh, the current boathouse in the proposal appears to be severely under, uh, uh, severely uh, lower than the needs of the community itself. Uh, that space really should have a 14,000 square foot facility for boat storage specifically. Uh, additionally, the entire southeast of that portion just past the buildings uh, would be ideal for that and all of the rowing aspects uh, and really shouldn't include the gardening facilities in that area. Uh, the important aspect about this is that it would be a center for all of San Franciscans. It would provide the necessary space to serve the already 400 youth that row on Lake Merced, but also provide more space so that can expand, as well as uh, adaptive or para rowing, so Paralympics, uh, veterans, recovery and therapy, uh, rec and competitive adult rowing, general non-rowing fitness programming, uh, and really help bring rowing to a much wider and much more diverse uh, population, especially those youth and adults who are traditionally underrepresented. Uh, Finally, I, I ask with utmost urgency that the uh, commissioners, but also those organizing this, uh, bring in the rowing community, bring in the leaders, the, the caretakers uh, who've been involved in over 40 years and 60 years and 70 years in many cases uh, here. Uh, this is of course a environmental impact report aspect, but it was frankly concerning that uh, the plans therein uh, did not reflect any of the visions of the rowing community itself and that they were not brought in. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't unmute myself. Um, next up, we have Emily Koenig. Um, and you can unmute yourself to, to speak or the host will. Uh, hi, my name's actually uh, Gavin Kalise and I'm uh, reaching out on behalf of the Pacific Rowing Club. Um, I'd like to uh, basically second a lot of what Sam just said. Um, in the report, it didn't mention rowing at all. And the rowing community is down at Lake Merced seven days a week, um, every day of the year using the water, being good stewards to the lake, um, making sure that the facilities we currently use are being maintained and we don't receive a whole lot of support from the city as is. So we're already uh, making sure that 
we're keeping the lake clean mostly by ourselves. Um, the fact, yes, the fact that the the facility is slated to be as small as it is, I believe. Uh, I I think it said it was going to be three thousand square feet for the new boathouse is ridiculously small. The the current boat bay the Pacific Rowing Club operates out of is thirty six thousand feet, and we are out of space. Um, every year we're only about able to uh, coach about one hundred and twenty youth in our program. And we'd like to see that expand and get bigger so that we can reach out to more youth in San Francisco. Um, we've started efforts to reach out to underprivileged youth and are partnering with uh, services that are already out in the city right now, um, such as Sunset Youth Services and YCD out in the Bayview to make sure that we can get more youth and more people in our community involved in Lake Merced and the sport of rowing. And I just am a little saddened and disappointed that the rowing community wasn't reached out to, to see what they have uh, to say about how that property can be used. And, you know, just to get our input on what could be done to make sure every, or we were gonna be able to have the biggest uh, impact on our community out there. Um, I think that's all I have to say, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, next person in the queue is um, Augie Phillips. Hi, am I, am I on? Yes, I am. Um, I, I'm hoping to speak to two things um, that were brought up, historical resources, and then as well, um, mitigation measures, which I didn't really see much talk of in the presentation. Um, uh, the first part has a lot to do with what the first two callers have just spoken about. Uh, rowing has a long history at this lake and uh, a very healthy relationship with this lake. And um, to not support that, that uh, historical use of the lake seems to not comply with um, your proposal and, and your procedures. Um, it, it is actually a very important thing that happens there. Um, the second I was hoping to talk a little bit about is mitigation measures, which you talked a little bit about lead being removed, which is great, but this, the intent of this project seems to involve people in water. The water quality is really poor at, at Lake Merced currently, and um, there's signage that suggests it's actually toxic. Uh, the, the people that row there currently have to wash their hands. They better not touch their eyes or they will be sick. Um, I am just wondering, is there any way infrastructure elements could be installed that would address water quality, such as like windmills that would put oxygen into the lake to combat fertilizer runoff from golf courses, things like this. I just don't see much in this proposal that involves uh, water quality. Um, I get, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. I appreciate uh, your comment. Now I have Emily again, but is that another person on the same line or is that um, the person who already spoke? Uh, it is another person. Um, my name is Emily Koenig and I'm the program director at Pacific Rowing Club. Uh, just to kind of, again, communicate that um, we were looking or we were hoping to expand to Lake Merced West and that would definitely impact um, your EIR and uh, yeah, we were looking for more like a 14,000 square foot boathouse uh, to expand our programs to reach more youth as both Sam and Gavin have already touched on. Um, and we just don't want to uh, be behind the ball. And we wanna make sure that um, people are aware that we, this is what we're interested in. And um, I hope that we can start to work with the city more about it uh, later. So that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Um, the next person in the queue is Richard Demmel. Julie, hi, Rick Damel here. Um, I'm also a senior who is part of the rowing program on Lake Merced. And you've heard from a number of us that 
the facilities that we currently have, which are about 9,000 square feet, um, are inadequate for the usage we're, we're both putting it to and trying to expand to, and would like to see a larger facility. Now, in terms of an environmental report, if I go back to the very first speaker, Dick, um, he asked if there were alternatives that could be put in the environmental study. We would hope that in the, your consideration, you would include an alternative that would look at a much larger rowing facility for your environmental impact in terms of a larger dock, a much larger facility, more usage of the land at that point, and how to uh, handle that from an environmental point of view. So we all want, we all in the rowing community would like to see the project scope um, uh, uh, adjusted, but this is not your concern right now, you're telling us. So it's the environmental side of a larger rowing facility that we would ask you to look at. Okay, thank you very, very much. Um, the next person I have is Michael Knapp. Hi, um, this is Michael Knapp. Uh, I'm the chairman of the board of directors at Pacific Rowing Club, and uh, you can probably guess the direction this is going to go in after the first uh, five or six people. But um, I, I've been part of the Lake Merced rowing community for 10 years, and I, I came here from Boston, where rowing is uh, like its own world. And I've come to know an incredible uh, community that is is bursting to expand. Uh, we, we at Pacific right now, um, we have more kids than we have boats uh, and, and seats for them to sit in. So we, we need more space to put more boats. Uh, and, and that uh, goes without saying for the other clubs as well that, that share the Lake Merced uh, rowing uh, community, uh, South End, uh, San Francisco Rowing Club, Dolphin, and obviously St. Ignatius. Uh, we um, we want to be more included. Uh, and we think that the environmental impact uh, like should or we would hope it would take a, 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 another look at uh, improving the the uh, the ability for the rowing to expand on Lake Merced. Um, that's it for my time. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Knapp. Uh, next person I have up on the list is Gabrielle O'Neill. Hello, my name is Gabrielle O'Neill. I second generation San Franciscan, and I have a special affinity for the site of the current project, um, being that my husband and my engagement party were held at the Pacific Rod and Gun Club, and I've also attended a number of events there in the past prior to its closing. So seeing that this site has been underutilized for so many years is very exciting. However, I am concerned quite a bit about the project description upon looking at it and hearing about it in that I feel that it does not sufficiently represent the rowing community. Uh, I see that there are many exciting opportunities, restaurants, skate park, but looking at the size of the boathouse, I currently believe that it's also uh, grossly underestimated uh, and that something in the size of maybe three to four times the proposed square footage would be much more adequate. Um, being someone who supports the rowing community on Lake Merced, I have seen firsthand how the current clubs are caring for the site. Um, I have seen their students um, and participants picking up and taking care of the sites, picking up garbage, sweeping, keeping it clean. They are wonderful stewards of the lake. And so allowing them to have a larger facility, I believe would also benefit the environment because they will absolutely take care of their sites, the site. And also it would be, um, you know, a wonderful opportunity for those in the rowing community, the professionals who have spoken to also be included in the city's planning and process group. Thank you very much. And that's all I have to say for today. Thank you for your comments. Okay, next up I have Whitney Grover. Yes, hi. Um, uh, my name is Whitney Grover. I'm a board member and of Golden Gate Audubon, as well as the chair of their San Francisco Conservation Committee. Um, thank you for allowing us to um, provide input here. And um, I just wanted to ask that in the EIR, uh, biodiversity assessment is included. 
um, especially since that area has been closed, I think it would be important to um, have a, a survey done of the plants and insects and birds and all the other animals that are there, um, and then have that be um, sort of mapped with what your building plans are and the clearing of the willows there. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the next person to speak would be Christian, sorry, Warzonek. Oh, I didn't do that too poorly. Uh, a valiant effort. Um, that was uh, very close. Um, hi, my name is Christian Warzonek. Uh, I also uh, represent Pacific Rowing Club and you can guess which direction I'm gonna go with this as well. Um, I understand the scope of this meeting is specifically related to the environmental impact of this project. And that's obviously very high on our priority list. Um, to give you a little context, Julie, I'm sure you're um, a little surprised by the uh, huge number of voices you're hearing from the rowing community, mostly because we have been sort of in the dark about where this project has been going. Um, so we don't necessarily need to solve exactly what this project is going to look like or how it's going to relate to Pacific Rowing Club, I think, the, or St. Ignatius or Dolphin Club or South End Rowing Club or any of the other programs that row on the lake. The main thing here is that we make sure that the environmental impact of the project scope leaves room, as Richard succinctly put it, for a larger space for the rowing community. And it has not been mentioned yet, but the rowing community is obviously willing to um, engage at a financial level as well to make sure that we can accomplish the goals that we want to accomplish for this lake. Um, yeah, so that's all I have to say, but uh, thank you very much for putting this presentation together and we look forward to working with you. Great, I appreciate your, your comments. All right, uh, Doug Jacuzzi, please. Hello, my name is Doug Jacuzzi, and I, I want to also throw in a plug for the rowing community as a father of uh, two young rowers uh, that went, both went through the program for a total of nine years um, along with, with the program, and also as an employee of interns from the rowing program within my, um, my organization. I'm an ex executive director of Westside Water Resources. Um, uh, I, I very much appreciate the, uh, the program laid out uh, on this presentation, although I'm, I'm, uh, I'm surprised and uh, a little bit dis dismayed that we don't see a bigger connection to the water itself um, and the environmental impact, noting that the uh, Lake Merced is the expression of the West Side Basin Aquifer, of which in part uh, historically was uh, and currently is uh, drinking water um, for domestic use in the city of San Francisco, as well as in uh, municipalities south of San Francisco. Um, I'd, I'd like to propose that this scope of the project also include um, a hydrological cycle uh, interpretive center for, uh, for again, for youths of San Francisco, open to the school district um, so that uh, our future generations can learn more about the hydrological cycle um, and the water that we use and the water that is underneath us and around us and specifically there at Lake Merced, the center, epicenter of uh, our water issues um, here in San Francisco and on the peninsula. Uh, that's my statement uh, and appreciate it very much. I will follow up with the written statement as well. And hello to all the rowing folks out there. Okay, thank you. Interesting ideas. Um, next person, Joseph Abrams. Uh, did you disappear or put your hand back down? Okay, then uh, the next person I have is Boris Delapine. Good evening, can you hear me? Yes, we do. Uh, my name is Boris Delapine. I'm a uh, South End Rowing Club member and a uh, Pacific Rowing Club parent. And I would uh, like to echo the speakers that, uh, from the rowing community that came before me and just request that you add alternatives to your EIR that allow for the opportunity to expand the uh, footprint of the existing boathouse. Uh, in your study, I would also encourage that whether it's the planning department 
or uh, the recreation and park department that you engage and bring the rowing community to the table. And that includes the South End Rowing Club, the Dolphin Club, St. Ignatius, and the Pacific uh, Rowing Club. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Appreciate your comments. Um, Dick, you have your hand up again, but I think I'll have to ask you to um, put your comments in writing to me because we're really just giving each person um, one opportunity to speak. And uh, Joseph, did you speak already or are you, is this your first time? You can... Hi, this is Joe. Um, so sorry about that. Um, yeah, I just wanted to echo what you've heard already from quite a few rowers. I've been on the lake for 27 years. I'm associated with a bunch of the clubs, Dolphin Club, rowing, uh, Pacific Rowing Club on the board. And, um, you know, I just want to point out that, you know, we've been in discussions for many years and many cycles about how we can integrate rowing more into this uh, community and to also expand the footprint and make it safe and have it a, a facility that's really state of the art. And we can help uh, by, of course, participating in the new uh, restaurant um, and all the other activities that you guys are proposing, which we'd like to participate in as well. So just uh, seconding, thirding, fourthing, everything you've heard tonight, and uh, I would hope that we could represent with something that's more akin to what we're looking for to increase the footprint for those that want to row, because not, uh, not as many kids who want to row are allowed to, given the, the small footprint we have today. And I think 12,000 square foot was the last proposal um, years ago for a boathouse that would adequately set, you know, satisfy all the clubs you've heard from tonight. And so we're hoping that you can uh, take that in consideration moving forward. Thank you for your presentation. It's very informative and looking forward to working with you guys uh, more closely. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, just three more here. We've got Patty Downey. Patty, you can go ahead. Sorry, I had to unmute. <laughs> um, I am the parent of two children who participate in the rowing community down at Lake Merced, and I want to second, I guess, or more than second, <laughs> what others have said about um, the importance of taking into consideration the rowing community um, and ask that in the EIR, you do include the possible expansion of uh, the boathouse. That's all. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Patty. Uh, next up, Richard Mortellaro. Hi, um, I'm Dean Mortellaro. Uh, I am Mrs. Downey's son. I participate in the rowing program at Lake Merced. I would also like to second what everyone else is saying uh, that in the EIS, please, um, or EIR, sorry, please, um, it would be good if you guys could focus on the rowing facilities. Um, a lot of my friends and I have been enjoying the lake and enjoying the program. Uh, and it, I think it would more it would be a, a lot better um, if we did have more state of the art facilities and um, a bigger boathouse. So thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, next, Ryan Stefanik. Hi, my name is Ryan Stefanik. I'm part of the uh, SI rowing. Well, yeah, the sport. Yeah. Um, and I'd like to just echo what everybody else has been saying about having a larger facility that would enable more um, kids to be a part of the rowing community at Lake Merced. Um, and I think uh, in your EIR planning of the area there, I think the uh, rowing community from SI and PRC and all of the other programs at the lake could really go hand in hand with what the city wants to do with the area. Uh, that's it. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, Gail Brownell. Can you hear me? Yes, you're on. Okay. Um, I'm also a rower, a member of the San Francisco Rowing Club. Um, I've been, been a rower for 20 years and I've been a member of a, other rowing clubs in other areas as well. Um, I echo what everyone says. We have the opportunity to make a really state-of-the-art, beautiful boathouse that would stand a par with some of the other ones in the area. And a specific environmental comment, um, something that's happening in the rowing community right now is 
um, rowing coaches, which are the only ones allowed to use gas powered motors on the lakes. In many places, uh, rowing coaches are switching to electric powered launches and putting solar cells on the roofs of the buildings. So if you could include that, that would actually be an environmental impact improvement by making it possible for that kind of a, a coaches launch in that lake, which um, would reduce the impact of gas motors on the uh, lake. Uh, also, um, I would just like to emphasize that the San Francisco Rowing Club for Adults has very limited space and more demand than we can satisfy. And usually I've had people walk up to me multiple times and say, how can I join? What do I do? And we don't really have the capacity now to add a lot of people. We have to send them other places for lessons. And if people have a private boat, there's no place for it. Yeah. So um, I really think that it would be important to look at all of that for the adult rowers, as well as all the high school rowers who will benefit from the sport across all diversities and ethnic backgrounds and everything. And then finally, I really like the idea of the groundwater aquifer. I learned a lot reading some of the reports about explaining how the Lake Merced fits into a much wider groundwater and water regime. And I think people really would benefit from understanding that as well as looking at the biodiversity. I appreciated those comments because all of us rowers bird watch every time we're out there. So thank you very much, appreciate it. Okay, thank you very much, Gail. Uh, next person to speak is uh, Patricia Phillips. Uh, hi, hi, good evening, Julie. We've got a bit of an echo, do you have two? Yeah. Sorry, that was my husband. Can you hear me now? Yes, that's better, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Um, I too am calling as the parent of um, two girl rowers at Pacific Rowing Club. And I am um, calling to, consider, to ask you two guys to consider expanding the report to include a larger boathouse. The rowing community is active and healthy. And as a parent of two girls, as I just mentioned, I have seen all the benefits and uh, with a larger boathouse, uh, I would love to see other youth have the same opportunity my girls have had. Um, thank you. All right, thank you, Patricia. Uh, the next person I have is Bartholomew Murphy. Did you speak again or is it another person in your household? Hi, this is Bart Murphy. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, uh, thank you for uh, hosting this uh, meeting this evening. I'd like, I too would like to associate myself with the comments of the other rowing families. My son has rowed at Pacific Rowing and currently uh, rows with the St. Ignatius Club. Um, it's interesting that uh, the, the, the group that probably has the uh, biggest impact at Lake Merced is, is uh, uh, virtually uh, not mentioned in, in the draft environmental impact report. And, and I, I hope I hope the various uh, city agencies, the uh, PUC, the uh, Park and Rec, and the Planning Commission are are are, are hearing from us this evening uh, that this draft report, excuse the pun, misses the boat on on the uh, on this project. And uh, I would look forward to encouraging uh, the various city agencies to sit down and engage with the rowing community. As you can see, it's it's a very engaged, uh, participatory group of families uh, and uh, citizens of San Francisco and uh, neighboring areas who are uh, keenly invested in Lake Merced and great stewards of Lake Merced. Uh, and I would urge the various agencies to work with us. And the uh, draft environmental impact report reflect that. And I will be adding my comments and writing as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, the next speaker is Craig McCahey. Craig, are you ready? I, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? There we yes. go. There you go. Uh, yeah, I'd like to emphatically support uh, all the statements in support of expanding the rowing program on Lake Merced. I'm a rower myself out of Dolphin Club, three kids who have... Uh, uh, who learned the uh, craft and the sport uh, through SI and PRC. My daughter coaches at PRC. 
this is an incredibly successful program that we'd like to expand and we'd like the EIR to reflect it. There are other aspects to it, uh, you know, kayaking, canoeing, water sports in general, uh, but the, all those programs have generated national champions, Olympic champions, and we'd like to make the expansion of this facility large enough to bring in uh, youths who are interested in the sport from all over the city, make it more ex uh, inclusive. Uh, everybody from seniors down to para rowers uh, and et cetera. Uh, the other thing I would say environmentally, uh, each club is self-managed and it's successfully self-managed. And collectively, I think we could make a strong impact, particularly on the perimeter of the lake, which is uh, not tended to. And I think we could uh, work in a very organized way to not only support our sport, but also improve the overall environmental quality of, the, of Lake Merced uh, when our program is put in place. Thank you for the, uh, the opportunity. All right, thank you for your comments. Uh, next person is Lisa Moore. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Well, firstly, thank you for um, hosting this meeting. And I am also a rower and a parent of a child at Pacific Rowing. And I, I think when we talk about the environment, environmental impact, it's important to think about the habitants of our community. And I think when you talk about people needing access to things that they love, we're talking about the rowing clubs, the dolphin club, there's a finite amount of access in this area for people that love the water and love to row. And I think what that's where a lot of us are feeling left out when there's such a lack of access to places to row. There's plenty of other areas for parks and basketball courts and that sort of thing. So I think when you have such an engaged, passionate community that's gonna advocate environmentally, <clears throat> financially to support this, to leave our community out is something that hopefully we can regroup and in, engage together so that everyone in the city can have more access to water and the sports that we love. Thank you. And I just would like to add with the remaining time, this is Lisa's husband, Jeff. I fully support all the comments from the rowing community. Uh, I wanna point out, my understanding is that uh, Park and Rec is responsible for encouraging all types of recreation. Uh, I like to surf, I like to kayak. I've been waiting for years for the lake to really see a big improvement. And I think it would be a step backwards if the full water community was not included in the outreach and is requested by other members of the community, at least at this stage, uh, accommodations were made for a very large uh, public boathouse and access area. Uh, there's a lot of folks who love the water out here. It's a tremendous resource. It should be respected. It should be handled properly by folks who really care passionately about the environment. And so we welcome that input and thank you for your time and help with this project. Okay, thank you, Moores. Um, the next person I have to speak is Candace Beasler Bottomley. Hi, uh, we are a rowing family at PRC, and my son Curtis, who's graduated from the program, would like to add his thoughts about the project. Uh, I'm an alumni of the program, and uh, rowing was very beneficial to me, and I believe. Uh, a larger boathouse would be beneficial. And so I'm speaking in support of uh, the larger boathouse. Thank you. All right. Uh, and the last hand raised is uh, Paula Nelson. You can can't hear you yet. You might need to. Is that better? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, um, my son had, was a rower back in uh, 2004, all the way up till now, and now he's a coach there. I've been watching these kids rowing for all these years, and I am amazed at how much they have learned about the environment, just being out there and being taught how to care for it and respect it. And um, also, I'm a scientific illustrator, so I find the peacefulness that surrounds the whole place just blend with the boats and the birds and the reeds. And I just think it should be encouraged. 
completely to have the rowing community be uh, the major caretakers of this area. Thank you. Oh, we've got one more hand. All right, Ruth Hess, please. Hi, my name is Ruth. Thank you so much for this opportunity to hear more about this project in more detail and to submit comments. I'd like to add my support for including the rowing organizations at Lake Merced in refining the scope of this project. This is a group of youths and adults who you've heard tonight are passionately committed to being good stewards of this water that we use seven days a week. Um, and I'd also like to uh, ask that a study done be done of the water quality. Thank you so much again. All right, thank you. Anyone else want to raise their hands and speak tonight? All right, then that, um, that about wraps up the public comment portion then for tonight's meeting. And we do appreciate your thoughtful comments. Although I am responsible for the environmental review, we did have the Rec and Park project managers um, who've been listening to this, you know, participating in this meeting. So they, they've heard your voices. Um, again, the comments, NOP scoping comments are, are about um, the environmental impacts of the project. I heard a couple questions regarding the cultural resources impact, and that's basically the historic resources the Rod and Gun Club remains um, that will be kind of more focused, but we will analyze all topics of the EIR. And then alternatives in an EIR sense are alternatives that lessen the environmental impacts of the project. So if there's some other configuration of the project that would reduce those impacts, um, that's what alternatives are typically designed to address. So not necessarily a, of the project design in and of itself, but you know, that said. Um, so you know, while we'd prefer to meet with you all in person, I do think that this format provides the flexibility for everyone to join from home and allows more people to um, participate in the scoping process. Um, before we end, again, a few comments to remind you of. Um, Please uh, give us your contact information if you'd like to be included in the further future outreach. I, um, and I do believe we, if you registered for this meeting and get, left your email address, uh, we should have that and able to be able to send you notices um, of when the draft EIR is released. Uh, again, comments are due by July 9th and you can send them to me. I will get them at uh, CPC, Lake Merced West EIR at SFGov. Uh, again, you can give me a ring if you have questions. My phone number is 628-652-7566. And uh, you can reach out to the Rec and Park staff, Jackie or Chris. Um, they have this, their emails are also on the, the, the notices. So, um, or I can provide it to you if you don't have them, but um, that about wraps everything up. I appreciate you taking the time to join us this evening and um, take care.